you, Brother Rose. And praise the Lord, everybody. When we say praise the Lord, it's our way of saying, hi, how you doing in a sanctified way. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But at the same time, we're giving praise to the one that made it all possible for us to be here. Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. You may be seated. It is good to be here. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Enjoy being with you Wednesday night. And again, I want to thank this church for your being such a blessing to us in the work that the Lord has called us to do. And see, just a few months ago, we were having here for a fishing for missions. And that was quite a day. Amen. Amazing. And and thank you all so much for everything you've done for us. Praise the Lord. And I'm enjoying this weather. Amen. Yes, sir. What you laughing at? I'm enjoying this weather. And sure enough, we have four seasons. We have the long rainy season and the short rainy season and the long dry season and the short dry season. But it's warm all the time. <laughs> And so thankfully I had a jacket stashed away at Justin's house in a closet. But uh, I got out yesterday morning, just walked a ways, and, and it felt good to be a little chilly without having to pay for it. <laughs> That's right. Praise the Lord. Good to be here. And my wife is here. And be always good to be with my mom. Thank you, Brother and Sister Rose, and all of you. Good to see everybody today. Yeah. Amen. Now, let me tell you how this works, okay? For me. Pastor Rose talked to me Wednesday night about being here this morning as well. So, when I know I'm going to be preaching somewhere, I just start thinking and praying and kind of just feeling. Lord, these are your people. I don't know what to preach. I don't want to just pull something out and kind of pray and, and uh, just seeking. And, and it seems like eventually you kind of get to a place where you feel like this is the way. I can't describe it much better than that. But after thinking and praying and asking the Lord, this is the way that I'm going to go today. Amen. Amen. Back in the previous millennium, when I was a student at Texas Bible College, I was working on a part-time job while going to school. And I was working with a guy, and we were talking one day in the break room, and he was talking about his church. And he said, you know, in our church, we don't teach doctrine. In our church, we don't teach doctrine. So, I've thought about that, and I've come to the conclusion that doctrine is not important. Can you put that up there for us, sister? There we go. That's my title today. Doctrine is not important. Dot, dot, dot. And you know what that means? That means there's something that hasn't been said yet. So now that I have your attention, doctrine is not important. That's the conclusion I've come to. Dot, dot, dot. It's known as an ellipsis. It means something's left out. So doctrine is not important unless you want to be saved. <laughs> Amen. Doctrine is really not important at all unless you want to be saved. So today I'm going to preach doctrine is not important. But don't forget the dot, dot, dot. Amen. Isaiah chapter 28. 
Let's read verses 9 and 10. And then if you have your Bible or keep it close by, we'll be reading several scriptures today. But this is what I felt for this service today. So somebody, listen up. Maybe this is for you. And for all of us, but sometimes a message is specifically for individuals. So today I want to let you know that doctrine is really not important unless you want to be saved. So let's look at it. Isaiah 28, verses 9 and 10. <clears throat> whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Everybody say doctrine. And here is the answer. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Verse 10, for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Let's all pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your people that have gathered together. And we come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, asking for your anointing power, asking for understanding. God, give us your power and your anointing to speak your word. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. And everybody say amen. amen. And you may be seated. So, to whom will he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And the answer seems strange to us, but when we understand what it is saying, it's talking about those that are mature enough to understand it and to receive it. So who's going to be able to receive knowledge and, and doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and that are drawn from the breast. Those that have some understanding about them. Now I know we start teaching our children doctrine before they really fully understand what they are saying and what they are hearing. And that's good. But there comes a point of understanding. And when you get that point of understanding and being able to receive doctrine. You may be like my friend, I don't even remember his name, but the guy at work that said, we don't even, we don't teach doctrine. And, I, and I'm thinking, how in the world can you have church and not teach doctrine? Because if you teach, you have doctrine. The word doctrine means instruction. It means teaching. And so it's impossible to have church without doctrine if you teach anything at all. Right. And if you just teach all you do is love Jesus and don't worry about everything else, well, that's your doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. And so we understand the value of doctrine. And there are some core basic doctrines of the church coming to us from the Bible that we understand are very, very important. And there must come a place of maturity in order to accept and receive doctrine. You come into the church, maybe you don't know anything about living for God. All you know is you came in and you felt something and the Lord got a hold of your heart and maybe you went to an altar or maybe standing between the pews somewhere, you reached up your hand, lifted up your hands and somebody said, just praise the Lord. And you began to praise the Lord and, and you received the gift of the Holy Ghost and you walked out of there full of the Holy Ghost, but you didn't know anything except you felt something and you knew but if you kept coming back, somebody would start teaching you, maybe a home Bible study or something, and started, you started coming on Wednesday night, and you, you learn, hey, I need to get baptized. Yeah. How did you know that? Somebody taught you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, and you came on a Wednesday night, and pastor got up preaching, saying, you need to be faithful to the house of the Lord. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Well, maybe you were a small before that. Yeah. That's the small SMO, Sunday morning only. <laughs> but you learn that you need to be in church. Somebody taught you that. And so you, some people say, I don't need that. I, they're so immature, they can't accept doctrine. But when you get to a place of understanding and maturity, you learn that I need some doctrine. I need some teaching. I need a foundation that will keep me in the house of the Lord and keep me living for God because I If you're not worried about being saved, then don't worry about doctrine. It's not that important. 
But if you want to be saved, doctrine is important. Amen. Amen. Are we mature enough to receive doctrine this morning? Amen. Are you mature enough to receive the word of God when your pastor is preaching and teaching? The immature person says, I don't like that. And they get offended over doctrine. Right. Right. Amen. And sometimes they get offended at the one that's preaching the doctrine. Right. As if he just made it up himself. Yeah. That's immaturity. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. But who can receive doctrine? Those that are weaned. Those that have got some understanding. They, they're not just a baby, but they have some maturity about them. So today, I thank God for doctrine. Yeah. I thank God for teaching. Yeah. Amen. And how does it happen? Well, here's the way it happens. Verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Or that you know that this part of the, the word of God, priest, this precept, or this concept, this idea, this part, precept upon precept. And then he said it again, precept upon precept. What are we doing? We're building something here. Amen. Line upon line. And then he said it again, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. And do you know that's the way we learn and grow? Yeah. Right. That's the way we learn how to live for God. Precept upon precept. Amen. Con concept upon concept. Scripture upon scripture. Idea upon idea. Doctrine upon doctrine. Amen. How many of you went to school and you came back the first day reading? Yeah. Yeah. The kid goes to school and they come back home. What would you learn today? I learned A. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, can you read yet? Yes, I can read. I can read the word A. Do they know how to read? No. But if they keep going back and they keep learning, precept upon precept, word upon word, line upon line, letter upon letter, they'll get through all 26 of them. They'll learn how to put them together and learn how to read because they learned it here a little, there a little. And that's the way it is in the kingdom of God. Right. We're not born apostolic Pentecostal one that's baptized in Jesus' name, knowing, amen, everything about living for God. You're not born in the and you're not born in the spiritual knowing everything about living for God but you just keep on coming to church and you keep on living for God and you keep on praying and you keep on opening your Bible and here a little, there a little, here a little there a little Amen but I don't know why you're getting excited because doctrine is really not important <laughs> unless we want to be saved now, I hope somebody's not sleeping and only hear the first part. <laughs> so, little by little, someone said it takes a lot of church to make a saint. <laughs> How many times have you been to church if you've been living for the Lord any time at all? Could you count them? Thousands. But you just keep on growing, keep on living for God. Through those good times, Hey man, like the sister was talking about this morning, through those bad times, just keep on living for God. But you keep growing. You keep learning. Here a little, there a little. Now let's go over to the New Testament and let's look at what happened in the early church. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 41 and 42. Acts chapter number 2, verse 41 and 42. And we're going to read here on the day of Pentecost. It says, and it, and it, excuse me, I'm in the wrong place here. Uh, 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Wow. So the day of Pentecost, Holy Ghost poured out. Peter preached. Repent, be baptized, every one of you, etc., etc. And then the same day, 3,000. 3,000 people were added to the church. Alright? So what did they do from that point on? Well, we got it now. That's all we need. Me and you, Jesus, we got our own thing going. If you're old enough to remember that, you're probably about my age. What did they do? Verse 42, and they continued steadfast. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. So two key words, continued steadfastly. 
They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They didn't know everything they needed to know. They may not have fully understood yet what happened to them. Sometimes people come, especially if they do not have an apostolic Pentecostal background, and they come and receive the Holy Ghost, and you may ask them, what happened to you? I don't know. Amen. And sometimes you may say, did you receive the Holy Ghost? I don't know. They may not know what the Holy Ghost is, but they know something happened. Yeah. Amen. But they keep coming. You learn. Understand. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. The teaching of the apostles. So let's understand. What is the apostles' doctrine? The apostles' doctrine is the teaching of the apostles. Where did that doctrine come from? The apostles were themselves taught by Jesus. Amen. And Jesus said to them, go and teach the, you know, preach the gospel, etc., etc. He gave them a commission. And so the apostles' doctrine is the doctrine of Jesus. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. That included the oneness of God. That included the new birth message. That included baptism in Jesus' name. Receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, etc., etc. Living for God. And living a life of holiness and separation from the world. All things that the apostles taught, they were instructed by Jesus and then they were continually led by the Holy Ghost. And so we have written in the Bible the apostles' doctrine, which is the doctrine of Jesus. Right. So they continued. So, doctrine is really not that important. Yeah. Unless you want to be saved. Yeah, right. Amen. They continued. We need to continue. Let's go on. Ephesians chapter number 4. And I have several scriptures today. Ephesians chapter number 4. And we're going to look at verse, start with verse number 11. Now stay with me. Don't zone out. Some people, when you start reading a few scriptures, they kind of like zone out. But this is amazing. We're going to read the Bible in a Bible study. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Amen. Now I know there's times we take one key scripture and we just preach on that three points and give an altar call. But today, this is more expository type preaching where we're going to look at some verses and understand what they're talking about because I just happen to believe doctrine is important. Yes. Because I do want to be saved. Yes. So Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 11, it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Who gave them? The Lord gave them. He gave them to the church. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. The perfecting is bringing to maturity. The perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. The word edify means to build up. And so God has given these to the church for these purposes. Verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Amen. We come to church. We're out there. Different levels of growth and different levels of understanding. There are people here that have been serving God longer than I am old. And there are people maybe that in this room today that have maybe only been serving the Lord for just a short time. We're at different levels of maturity, different levels of experience. But the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God through the ministry that God has given to the church is to bring us to that maturity. To bring us, in verse 13, to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. A mature, full grown man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. So as Brother Stephen Terry talked about it, wanting to be like the Lord today. Amen. And we're, we're still in a process. We're still in a process. And one day we're going to see Him and we're going to be like Him. We will see Him as He is. But right now we're in that process. And to keep you in that process, it's going to take some teaching and preaching of the Word of God. And it's a very foolish person that gets mad at the messenger because he doesn't like the message. Amen. Amen. Do you go out and kick the mailman every time he brings your electric bill? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you probably pay it online now, but anyway, you know what I mean. <laughs> you're going to need some teaching, and you're going to need some preaching, and you're going to need some good. 
Amen. It takes a lot of preaching and teaching to get us from here to heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. If you're going to give, you're going to need some preaching and teaching. To bring us to maturity. To bring us to that place. And you've got to stay in the process or you short circuit the whole thing. You withdraw yourself. Well, I don't like that. I'm not talking about false doctrine. I don't like false doctrine either. But I'm talking about good, solid, biblical preaching and teaching. If you withdraw yourself from that, then you are taking yourself out of the process. That's right. Amen. And to reach the fullness of the stature of Christ, in other words, to be ultimately saved. Now we talk about, you know, there's, a, there's the, the past, present, and future aspects of salvation just very quickly. Past, I can look back and remember in 1969 as a little boy, about eight years old, I think it was in McLeod, Texas. I was baptized in Jesus' name, received the Holy Ghost. I can look back and say, I was saved there. Yeah. Amen? But the present, the present aspect of salvation is I'm still being saved. Hallelujah. God is still working on me. Right. God leading me and I still make mistakes and I still need to be corrected sometimes. So the present aspect of salvation is God is still working in my life. Amen. And the future aspect of salvation is when I walk through the day or whatever it's going to be and hear him say, well done thou good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Oh, I can look back and remember the, the, the time and I can look forward and say, oh, won't that be wonderful? But if I take out of the process right now, how do I expect to receive that future final aspect of salvation? You understand what I'm saying? So doctrine is not important unless you want to make it. Unless you want to be saved. And so we have to stay in the process. Learn to receive and accept teaching. Some personalities, I understand, some of our personalities are different from others. And some of some. I started to say some of us, but oh, far be it for me to be like that. But some of us have that too. I don't need anybody to tell me what to do. But that's the world's thinking. If you're going to be a child of God, you need somebody to tell you what to do sometimes. Amen. You need somebody to preach to you the word of God, the doctrine that God has given to us. Praise the Lord. All right, if you're still with me, say amen. amen. Wow, I need to move on. I've been going 22 minutes already. Amen. Praise. Thank you. <laughs> he agrees I need to move. <laughs> and if I can remember where I was, I'll move on. Chapter 4. <laughs> verse 14. I got it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. That we henceforth from now on be no more children. Remember, here a little, there a little. Those that are weak, those that have maturity, those that can understand. We don't want to just be children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Did you hear that? And we go and follow that. Did you hear this? And hey, don't get your spiritual direction from some lunatic on the internet. like that, but I'm not going to go follow some crazy person that I don't even know. Amen. The Bible says, know them that labor among you and esteem them very highly. Amen. So, we, you know, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 24 minutes and counting. Don't be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind. Don't you notice the wind 
Amen. We saw that north wind blowing out across the lake the other day. Praise the Lord. It blew all the Salvinia to those of you on the south side of the lake. <laughs> but we saw that north wind blowing. You know, you can see it rippling across the lake. And I thought it's going to get cold tonight. Because we know the north. But you know what? Hang around a little while. And it'll be blowing from the south again. South again and the Salvinia will come back. You know? <laughs> And then it may blow from the east to the west. But, you know, and some people, they're just every wind of doctrine, every, you know, every new thing. And, and oh, wow, this is a great thing. then, wow, this. And, and you need a good church and a good pastor. Are you glad you got one? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank God for a good church and a good pastor and a good fellowship. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We're not an island, but thank God for a good fellowship. And your pastor will bring in other people that have experience in the Word of God. Unless we want to be saved. Alright, verse 14. The children tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. The sneakiness. Deception. Right. Yeah. Wow. Amen? Yeah. By the way, your tithes and offerings don't belong to somebody you heard on the radio or the TV or the internet. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. That's what they're after, some of them. I'm not accusing everybody of being of being dishonest, but just be, you know, you esteem them that labor among you. Amen. I'm meddling now. The slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Now, if this was a problem in Paul's day, and he recognized that, how do you think it is in our day? That there's some people out to deceive. And they use the gospel to make merchandise of people. Or to make merchandise of the gospel. To make gain of people. We believe in giving. That's one of the basic doctrines of the church. But we understand that it's not about, you know, greedy, greedy, greedy for money, 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 money. You know, I remember when I was a kid, we used to be up, up here around Rodessa and all, McLeod and all that. And sometimes late at night, you could get that radio station from down in Mexico. For, uh, you know, how, can somebody remember that? Del Rio. Del Rio, yeah. Right across the border from Del Rio and over the edge of Mexico was this, what, 500,000 watt station, I think it was. And I heard one time that if somebody could afford to get there on that program or on that station, get a program on that station for a certain period of time, if they could afford to finance it, after that they didn't have anything to worry about. And I remember, okay, I'm telling how old I am now. How many remember Reverend Ike? Yeah. Oh yeah, thank you. I'm not. Yeah, this is Reverend Ike. <laughs> can't lose. And I'm going to teach you how to use your mind power to get what you want. <laughs> and he was preaching a prosperity gospel way back then. Exactly. But of course, he wanted you to send your tithe and all. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? Making merchandise of people and things. That's not what we're into. That's not what the Bible's all about. And it talks about verse number 15, but speaking the truth in love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes doctrine hurts. Sometimes it cuts. Especially when it hits all. And we recognize this is correcting me. Amen. But as preachers of the gospel, we have to speak the truth in love. Is it really love to lie and say you're okay? Don't worry about it. Is that real love? No, but real love, sometimes it's tough love that says, this is what the Word of God says. And I'm going to preach it and teach it no matter if you like it or you don't like it. The purpose is not to offend anybody. I don't think your pastor ever gets up here and says, boy, I'm really going to offend somebody today. I just can't wait. No. But he has a mandate from God to get up and preach the word of God. Preach it with love. But preach the truth. Hallelujah. Preach the truth. Amen. If you receive it or you don't receive it. It's the in season. Out of season. Reproof. Give it. So with all long suffering and doctrine. So everybody say thank the Lord for the word of God. Speaking the truth in love may grow up. There it is again. We've got to grow up into him in all things. Which is the head. Even Christ. 
All right? So we've had to grow up into maturity. Verse 16. From whom the whole body, fitly joined together, the church as a body, joined together, compacted by that which every joint supplies. Think about it. Like a body. It's all fitting together. You've got all these ligaments and muscles and everything holding the body together. The skeleton's in place. The nerves are in place. Every part has a, a part to play in the success of the success of a body, and so it is in the church. We all join together by the compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. I mean, if one part stops working, you're going to know it. Right? <laughs> you know, wow, that arthritis got my elbow. <laughs> oh, that bursitis. I used to hear old people talk about bursitis, but I've lived long enough to know what it is. <laughs> but every part working together make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So the body, when it's working properly, edifies itself. The church, when it's working properly, and the ministry is doing their job of preaching and teaching the word of God, and the body is receiving the word, and we're growing and we're coming to maturity, then the body begins to edify or build up itself. A healthy body takes care of itself. And a healthy church, amen, that has good, strong, sound doctrine ministers to itself. Praise the Lord. So everybody say doctrine is really not important. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Okay, let's go quickly. 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. If you're interested, 32 minutes and counting. I put my phone up here because I can't really see that clock. And I don't know if that's by design or if that's, you know. I see the bottom half of it. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Let's go to, excuse me, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 3. Paul is writing. We're going to have several verses here from Timothy. Uh, let's, let's go quickly, but I want you to not go so quickly that we just get through it. But understand. Let's read with understanding. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Excuse me, I did it again. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Am I still good back there, Sister John? Uh -huh. Chapter 1, verse 3. As I besought thee to abide still in Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. So Paul, saying to Timothy, I left you in Ephesus, so you would charge some, you would, you would tell some, you would teach them that they had no other doctrine, no other doctrine than the doctrine that Paul had already taught them. But doctrine really not that important. Neither give he, verse 4, to fables and endless genealogies. Fables, you know, just stories, just, you know, all these things you hear. Hey, someone quoted Abraham Lincoln when he said, uh, one should not believe everything one reads on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and you and I don't, don't believe everything you hear. Fables. Endless genealogies. You know, there were those evidently that would try to go back and trace genealogies, trying to prove, you know, that whatever, this, that, the other. But all this just, what's the point of it? But look at this. Look at verse 4. These things which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do. So what I told you to do, Timothy, you do it. But what I want to point out is this. There are some things that minister questions. All it does is put more questions in your mind. I'm not talking about searching the scriptures to know what the scriptures are really saying. But there are some weird and strange and crazy doctrines out there. They do not minister godly edifying or godly building up. They minister questions. And even would cause you to question the validity of the Bible. Amen. Amen. Have you noticed that there are different types of questions? There are questions 
that are asked with a desire to learn. Sincere questions. And those are good questions. Because that's the way we learn. We learn by asking, either verbally asking or in our own minds. I wonder what this means. And then maybe we somebody get up and preach it or teach it. And we, oh, now I know what that means. Or we go to someone and we say, can you help me understand what this means? But there are other questions that are not intended to get information or for understanding. But there are questions that are intended to bring questions into the mind. You know the difference? There's foolish questions. Someone said there's no, no stupid question. Well, there are some stupid questions. Yeah. If it's a sincere question asked to learn and to grow and to understand more, that's a good question. But a question that's just intended to confuse people and to mix people up and, you know, silly questions about, you know, crazy things that really don't matter at all. Amen. God has given us enough to understand in the Word of God that we can be saved. There's some things I don't understand. There's some things I don't know. There's some things that I don't need to know, but I know enough in the doctrine of the Word of God of how to get saved and how to stay saved because I want to make it all the way. Hallelujah. So there's some questions I won't even bother to take the time to answer or try to answer. First of all, I probably don't even know the answer. But some questions I don't even feel like I have to do the dignity to try to give a response when it's asked for the wrong motive. Just a foolish question just to minister more questions. Amen. But if you don't understand something, of course you ask questions. Of course you go to your pastor or to someone and ask honest questions. And But you understand the difference. And Paul said there are some, they're only ministering questions. They're ministering questions. Their questions are only to, to minister to more questions. Things that are not important at all. Where was I? Verse 3? Verse 4? Verse 5 now. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart. The end of what commandment? The end of the commandment that you are to tell them they are to teach no other doctrine. What I've told you to do, you do it. Tell them not to listen to these fables and fairy tales and endless genealogies which only bring about more questions. So, Timothy, you do that. And the end of that commandment, what is the result of good, solid doctrine? Amen. The end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of a faith unfeigned. That's unhypocritical faith. A genuine faith. Yeah. Can somebody say amen? amen? That's what we're after, isn't it? Yeah. We want a good conscience toward God. We want to be saved. We want to have a good understanding. Amen. We want to have a pure faith. Verse 5. Verse 6. From which some. Everybody say some. Having swerved. Have turned aside unto vain. Jangling. How do you like that? Vain jangling. Now you probably said that yesterday to your kids. Would you stop that vain jangling? <laughs> but those that swerve aside from sound doctrine. Amen. Those that swerve aside. Hey, when you swerve aside, be careful you don't run off the road. Yeah. But they turn a lot of noise and there's a lot of noise going on today under the banner of Christianity. There's a lot of noise, just vain jangling, just a lot of racket. And so Paul telling Timothy, you teach these people that they don't do that like some have done. Verse 7, he's talking about those that have turned aside desiring to be teachers of the law. Understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. They don't even know what they're talking about. Amen. I get kind of tickled sometimes, you know, and we see this in other countries. But you know, hello, I'm Apostle so and so. <laughs> okay, hi, Apostle. <laughs> you know. Uh, or, I'm Prophet so and so. Well, we believe in apostles and we believe in prophets. But I don't think we have to go around seeking a title. Amen. But, you know, so there are those that just, they want to be a teacher. They want to be, they want the live life. And, they, and I, I'm not their judge. I'm mean, giving this by demonstration. But God's word tells us we're not to be looking for these things, not to swerve aside. He said, he even says, they don't know what they're talking about. They don't even know what they're talking about. All right, let's go. 
First Timothy chapter 4. We still doing okay? Amen. All right. Amen. Somebody sleeping beside you, wake them up, say, doctrine's not important, and let them go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and then Pastor Rose going to have a whole lot of mess to fix after I leave. He let his brother get up there and preach that doctrine wasn't important. Yeah. But don't forget the dot, dot, dot. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. First Timothy chapter number 4. And we're getting closer. We're over, over halfway, so we're doing pretty good. I'll try to speak up again. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Have we seen it happen? Yeah. Yes. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Seducing spirits that would attract and try to draw people away from the truth. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. <laughs> Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Intentionally deceiving people. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. It's like branded or, or being cauterized until the nerve endings have no feeling. Having conscience seared. So that conscience that's there has become so seared. It, it can become so seared that there's no longer that sensitivity to the spirit. And people can step over the line and they can go into areas they don't need to go into. Amen. And, and, and get into deceiving people. And you hear of all, all the crazy stuff that's going on. You know, all the accusations that are being made right now. And sad to say that even happens sometimes in, in, in people that are claiming to be preaching the gospel. They'll step over over the line and what happened maybe somewhere along the way their conscience became seared. I don't want my conscience to be no. seared. I want to remain sensitive to the Holy Ghost. So pastor, preach from doctrine. Amen. Hallelujah. Evangelist, apostle, pastor, teacher. Amen. Teach me. Help me to understand the word of God. I don't want to turn aside and follow lies and be lost. Praise the Lord. Chapter 4. What verse did I leave off? I'm glad somebody's paying attention. What was that again? Two. Two. Thank you. Listen to some of the things that he said they would teach in the last days. Forbidding to marry. Oh, so marriage becomes a sin. Some people teach. You know, you're not supposed to get married. Well, that's craziness. Commanded to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving, of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. So there be some that would teach, oh, you can't eat this. Now, I know in the Old Testament there were certain dietary restrictions for the Jewish people. But in the New Testament, we understand that you receive it with thanksgiving. Amen. Otherwise, you couldn't have eaten that bacon you had today, Jed. <laughs> or if you didn't have it, you wanted it. <laughs> I couldn't eat those, those pork ribs that Justin cooked yesterday. But, you know, you can get up and come up with all kinds of weird strings. Oh, you should. Okay, now, let's see how weird we can get. Okay, everybody, from now on, everybody has to wear red on Wednesday. Why? I don't know, but this sounds good, so let's all do it. Like, I'm going to start a new doctor right now. You know, and these things get started, and, you know, somebody said, you know, you've got to be a vegetarian, or you can't eat this kind of meat, or you can't, and they'll make a big doctrine over it, like it's essential for salvation. Amen. The Bible says they're, they're made to be received with thanksgiving. So if you want to eat that, that pork, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Just give thanks. Just give thanks for it. Say thank you, Lord. And eat with a clear conscience. <laughs> Somebody said if God hadn't intended for us to eat animals, he wouldn't have made them out of meat. <laughs> but he's talking about some of the different doctrines that people would teach. And people can make majors out of minors and minors out of majors. Yes. Amen. Get so caught up in these fringe things that, that really are not important at all and deny what is really important. And so we don't want to do that. We want to be saved. Amen. Amen. Somebody say thank God for doctrine. Thank God for doctrine. All right, very quickly. Let's go. For every creature, we read that. Verse 5, verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Again, Paul is talking to Timothy. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. Everybody say, good doctrine. Yeah. Whereunto thou hast attained. Verse 7. But refuse profane 
and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So we don't get up and preach fables and this and that and crazy stuff. We stick with the Word of God. Because the doctrine is going to help us to be saved. And then Paul gave some instructions to his son Timothy, son in the Gospel of Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I charge thee, verse 1, I charge thee. It's like I, I'm commanding you, I charge you. Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in kingdom. That shows us how important what he is about to say really is. I, I'm charging you, Timothy, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The one that's going to judge the living and the dead. That's how serious it is. Amen. If you don't believe doctrine is not important, amen, it's going to be something that's going to be judged by God. So, what do we do? we got to stay in the doctrine. Stay in the Word of God. Look at verse 2. Preach the Word. Preach what? The Word. Don't ever get tired of preaching. I know this is the church that loves preaching the Word of God. Don't ever get tired of all of that again. Oh, pastor's teaching that again. Well, maybe somebody had not heard it as many times as you have. Don't ever get tired of the Word of God. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. If they receive it, if they don't receive it, just preach the word. Reprove. Rebuke. Reprove is to correct. Rebuke. Exhort. That's to encourage. With all long suffering. That's patience and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust. Shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears? Tell me what I want to hear, preacher. Don't preach doctrine now. All we preach is love. Well, that's a doctrine. Amen. Thank God for the love of God. But we need more than just the love of God. We need to know how to be saved, how to stay saved. Amen. If it wasn't for the love of God, none of that would be possible. But we need to understand doctrine. Itching ears. Turn away their ears from the truth. Verse 5, 4. And shall be turned unto fables. Now I want you to listen to verse 3 and 4. This is from the contemporary English version of the Bible. It says, The time is coming when people won't listen to good teaching. Instead, they will look for teachers who will please them by telling them only what they are itching to hear. They will turn from the truth and eagerly listen to senseless Stories. Is that the day we're living in? I'm not interested in a fable. I'm not interested in a senseless story. I'm not interested in just this and that. What somebody's doing over here? What somebody? I want to know how to be saved. I want to make it all the way. How about you? Amen. So, preach it. Preach it. Tell me. Tell me what I need to know. Tell me what I need to do. Because doctrine really is important. Praise the Lord. One last passage of scripture. First Timothy again. Back to First Timothy chapter number four. Verse number sixteen. To thyself. Timothy, take heed, pay attention. Brother and Sister Rose came down to Suriname. They learned, I think I told you this before, but they learned what, as we were driving across to Unicare, they learned what Drimple meant. You still remember what a Drimple is? Yeah, he remembers what a coming was in about seven, eight years ago. But he still remembers. What, maybe more than that, close to 10 years. He remembers what a drimple is. That's a Dutch word that they use for a speed bump. And they love speed bumps. They have speed limits, but most people ignore them, so they put speed bumps. You can ignore it if you want to, but it will get your attention. One night I was driving back, it was after dark, and 
of a night and, and I was driving along and missed the sign. And most of the time they'll have a little sign to let you know one's coming in, you know, in, in a little distance. There's one right up ahead and I missed it somehow and boy, I hit that thing and whoop, it'll wake you up quick. <laughs> and uh, so they have a sign that says, pass up. That means like, pay attention. Pay attention, pass up. Not the ring the rumble. That means pay attention, you're approaching a speed bump. And if you don't pass up, you're going to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy, take heed. Pay attention to yourself. <coughs> Amen. Lord, I want to be saved. I need to take heed to myself. Hallelujah. I want to be saved. I want to make it all the way. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. <laughs> Hallelujah. I really don't belong down here for very long, but there, there's something better ahead. Hallelujah. We don't understand how it's all going to happen. We don't know all the details, but we're not going to get mixed up with some crazy doctrine that would cause us to swerve out of the way. Amen. And, and miss the road, but we want to make it all the way. Yes. Praise the Lord. So Timothy, take heed to yourself. And he's talking to Timothy, who was a preacher of the gospel. And he continued on. And he said, take heed to thyself and unto the doctrine. Take heed. Be careful. Pay attention to the doctrine. Why? Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Good. <laughs> That's what we're after. I want you to stand with me right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, let's lift our hands and thank the Lord for his word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Lord. Here's my conclusion. Now, if you think I preached a little long, well, Wednesday night I preached pretty fairly short. So we'll just average, okay? We'll average them together. <laughs> Here's the conclusion. I want to be in a church that is preaching sound doctrine. Amen? And if you're the leader of your family, make sure your family is in a church that's preaching sound doctrine. Are you thankful for all sitting you can see? good, solid, sound doctrine. Secondly, I want to make sure that I keep my spirit right to receive sound doctrine. Amen. I don't want to get my spirit all mixed up in crossways and, and remove myself from the process. Because there's a goal in mind. Hallelujah. I want to keep my spirit right so that if I need to be corrected, I can be corrected. If I need to be taught, I'm not too old to learn something. Everybody can teach me something, whether it be natural things. But especially when it comes to the kingdom of God, I want to have a teachable spirit. So if I'm wrong, I can be corrected. If I'm doing good, I can be encouraged. But if I'm wrong, I can be corrected. Praise the Lord. And then number three is, I've got to just keep on keeping on. Just stay in the right doctrine. So number one, be in a church that's preaching sound doctrine. Number two, keep my spirit right so I can receive it. And then number three, just stay in it. Stay in the race. Stay in the race. Hallelujah. Because Timothy, take heed. Pay attention. Watch out. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Because you're gonna, it'll help you to be saved, but also those that hear you, they can be saved as well. Can we close this? Part of service. I would like to ask. I know we may not do this on Sunday mornings as a normal thing, but come on, can we come in close? Can we come in close and just.